So 343 just released an update talking about the sandbox changes coming in with season three for Halo Infinite. And honestly, it feels a bit on the light end of things when it comes to updates. And 343 are making big changes for the desync issue currently going on in Halo Infinite. So if you want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. But also, did you guys know that 60% of you are not subscribed to this channel? That's a shame because I'm sure you're watching this because you'd like to stay updated with all the Halo news while I got you covered on this channel. And if you'd like to support the content, make sure you tap that like button, but let's get right into it. So the kick off the blog to talk about the bandit rifle a new weapon coming in with season three there has been a lot of discussion about this rifle as a lot of people have stated that they wanted it to be a starting weapon over what the current setup is right now especially in competitive though there are some interesting changes that come with this compared to what you would expect to see a dmr looking weapon in halo to be as this doesn't have a scope as your normal scopes is like saying like an assault rifle or a sidekick has like 1.4 time zoom that cannot be de-scoped we've seen leaks in videos talking about the bandit rifle we recently saw in an action at the HCS weekend, which I've covered on the channel here. And there is bloom with this weapon, but it seems like the first few shots, not so much. Stating you won't need to worry about bloom when going for a five shot, but we'd advise that you keep your shots controlled as the recoil will kick up when spamming multiple shots in a row. And from what we saw from the HCS weekend, there really isn't much in the way of bloom with this weapon, just a good amount of kick with it and no scope. Now this could be a weird glitch with observer mode, but there really isn't any that I saw when watching the gameplay over so this is gonna be a very accurate rifle. That's probably why they took the scope off of it because it would clearly outclass the battle rifle in every situation at that point. Next to talk about the shroud screen. I've heard people refer to it as like a bubble or shield. It's not that. It may look like a shield or a bubble or kind of like a bubble shield that we have back in Halo 3. It's not that. The way this whole thing works out is basically like a smoke grenade but in Halo this time. So the idea behind it is to block off lines of sight, be able to pull off some escape maneuvers and stated previously by 343 that once you're inside the bubble, you're not able to see any red dots on the radar. So you can't just camp inside the shroud screen and get easy kills. Your audio is dampened as well. And also if people know that you're in there, they can easily just throw grenades or shoot through it if they can get some lucky headshots on you. So this is purely visual distortion that's gonna be coming with this. There's no kind of protective layer or anything like that. It's just make it so you can't see through it. Interesting thing with the shroud screen recently showed case by General Heed who went to the H CS Charlotte event showcasing that you can shoot the shroud screen wherever you want and wherever that shroud screen lands it stays there so say if you shoot it on a player or like a warhog you have like with the threat sensor it doesn't work that way where it just stays on that moving target it will stay in spot where it hits some geometry so say you shoot a shroud screen on a player the shroud screen will just stay there if the player does move next let's go into the part that's part of the most important thing of this entire blog the balance updates and honestly in my opinion it's a bit light so first let's talk about the VK-78 Commander that got a nerf this time around where it goes from an eight shot kill to a nine shot kill. Everything else stays the same, just takes one extra bullet. In my opinion, it's probably a way for it to kind of sit a little bit better in the sandbox with the introduction of the bandit rifle, which kind of becomes a little redundant as the VK-78 Commando does pretty good at long and short range. So try to make it a little bit less effective will probably make it a little better at close range. So that you don't have people, you know, getting around corners at long ranges with the VK-78 Commando. The next weapon to get hit with some nerfs, the plasma pistol, where it's charge up time when from one second to 1.6 seconds to get that full charge ready to go. And it looks like the tracking ability will be nerfed on top of that. 343 states the reason why they nerfed the tracking ability on the plasma pistol is he's saying that people who were being shot by the tracking shot couldn't really decipher what was gonna hit, what wasn't. I've come across this issue as well. So basically what they've done is a little bit of a nerf when it comes to the tracking. So it's saying that the max tracking angle is going from 70 to 50 degrees of an angle. The max tracking minimum angle has gone from 35 degrees to 25 degrees and the tracking radius has gone from 0.5 world units to 0.3 world units. A really important audio change is coming in with season three saying that enemy footsteps are now harder to hear at distance but easier to hear at close range. 343 states the reason why they made this change is to help out with directional audio for where your hearing players come from. Which I say overall I would agree with that you can probably hear footsteps a little too clearly over range so this should help out with players that want to try to pull off a flank maneuver without having to crouch while the entire map and within the ranked place we're going to see the removal of the mangler energy sword and pulse carbine we're finally seeing these changes that have been requested by the committed community for over a year now 
finally being implemented better late than never. And 343 states that they will do a future tuning update when it comes to the disruptor as well as the spike grenades. They didn't state specifically what they were looking to do, but they did say that they wanted to reduce the effectiveness of the disruptor as well as reduce the randomness of the spike grenades so they have a little more consistency there as well. Which I would definitely agree with that change as I feel like spike grenades are really ineffective. Like you can sometimes just stand right on top of a spike grenade and not be killed. That's a bit ridiculous. And while you can't have a good update without some network and desync improvements happening for Halo Infinite as well. So this is going to be crucial to the overall experience you're going to be having. Stating that rubber banding is less likely to occur when moving or sprinting immediately after a match starts. Ammo, equipment, and grenade counts are more consistent after entering and exiting a vehicle. On the map Behemoth, players are now less likely to experience rubber banding while using a grapple shot to pick up a weapon from a power weapon pad. Vehicles are now less likely to desync when players use a disruptor against them and melee attacks are now more likely to register while holding a power seed but wait there's more we have a campaign update with this for campaign network co-op 343 states when playing with an unlocked frame rate on pc rubber banding and teleporting is now less likely to occur on the mission warship gabracken players are now less likely to fall through the floor on the gondola in the mission conservatory stuttering and teleporting are now less likely to occur after taking the teleporter to the the elevator room on the mission Spire. And finally, rubber banding and teleporting is now less likely to occur in the Pelican at the end of the mission Outpost Tremonius. Now, the reason why I was saying this is a bit light when it comes to the sandbox changes is because we're only getting two weapons being changed with both being nerfed. While there are still other parts of the sandbox I think definitely need tuning. I mean, 343 did address this with the disruptor as well as the spike grenades, but I think there's a lot more that can be done. This is your big seasonal update. This is the time you make some big changes to the meta to where you can get a little bit more variety within the sandbox. And well, we're just not gonna see that much with this update coming here in March. A big thing for me is that we're still not seeing any gravity effects when it comes to the gravity hammer within the game, which these gravity effects were crucial in previous games to pull off some unique maneuvers, speed running tactics, even griff ball. I think you can probably pull off some really cool custom game modes if you had gravity physics with the gravity hammer or how about the hydra which feels super weak and you have to be really much right on target if you want to deal any form of damage with that weapon but what about the charge shot for the ravager it does pretty much no damage i mean it does a little bit enough to maybe just deter players enough from not going that direction just because most likely you could be followed with battle rifle shots but it would be really cool to see that ravager charge shot really play effect let's say like in a mode of like strongholds or how about the shock rifle which is clearly the better option than the actual sniper rifle in halo infinite Either you have to buff the sniper rifle to make it a little bit easier to land those headshots like it is with the shock rifle or you have to nerf the shock rifle to line it more up with the sniper rifle. Either way, there's more to be done I feel with the sandbox and to be nerfing only two weapons within this major update seems a bit underutilized I guess is the word I'm looking for. But of course if there are any other changes that come with the sandbox I'll share with you guys in the channel. If you have any suggestions let me know in the comments down below we can even make a video about it. Now we recently had some information revealed about the narrative event coming day one for season three of Halo Infinite called Mindfall which we cover in this video right here. So if you guys want to know more check that out. Thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.